So how to develop mindsets for success with daily self-care rituals with Dr. Jen Harrison. Guys, do you think that success comes automatically? Well, most successful people will tell you that the most important thing that helped them become successful was their success mindset. So how do you develop that mindset for success? Would you like to learn? If so, you're in the right place. So today our guest, Dr. Jen Harrison, will share some practical tips for building a successful winner's mindset. Um, welcome to Happy and Healthy Mind. My name is Dr. Rosina, and over the last 20 years, I have been serving as a medical doctor specializing in psychiatry, a best-selling author, and a transformative speaker. I believe that our mind is the software that runs the hardware of our brain and our body. And therefore, I bring to you practical tips for mental fitness so you can live your best life without burnout and unnecessary suffering. Please consult your healthcare professional for any treatment advice. But if you find this content helpful, then join our mission of eradicating preventable suffering and suicides by liking, subscribing, and sharing so more people can live happier and healthier lives. So today our guest is Dr. Jennifer Harrison. She's a stress and body mind health expert with 33 years of experience in healthcare industry. She's certified Canfield Success Principles Trainer, Success Mindset Coach, EFT Practitioner, a best-selling author and a speaker. So thank you, uh, Dr. Harrison, for joining us today, all the way from Calgary, so welcome. Can you share your story? How did you get started in this uh, process? Thank you, Dr. Rosine. It's great to be here with you today. You're welcome. Okay. Yeah. Um, well, I've really been on this journey since I was a, a teenager. Uh, when I was in high school, I developed an interest in psychology, and I actually thought I wanted to be a psychologist at one point. And then a couple of years later, I developed an interest in athletic therapy. So I ended up getting uh, a, my university degree, a Bachelor of Science degree, with a major in psychology and a minor in zoology, where I was able to study anatomy and physiology and advanced uh, human anatomy. So I actually started off studying the mind and the body as two separate entities. <laughs> And then I went Don't on to study uh, athletic medicine. therapy, became a certified athletic therapist. And it was during that time, this was in the, in the, in the mid to late 80s, that I was uh, exposed a little bit to sports psychology. It was starting to come a little bit more to the forefront. Uh, more people were, were studying it and seeing how the, um, the mental emotional uh, component played a key role in sports performance. And, uh, and then I, I got uh, interested in reading about mind-body medicine, um, uh, reading books by Dr. Deepak Chopra and Dr. Joan Borisenko, who was one of the co-founders of the Mind-Body Medicine Clinic at Harvard Medical School. And so over the years, I have um, been studying mind-body medicine and the impact that stress has on our body and mind as well as learning a number of uh, techniques uh, through the years as well in terms of mind-body medicine, energy medicine, some energy psychology techniques like emotional freedom techniques. Um, and then I've just incorporated that into my practice. I worked as an athletic therapist for six years uh, before going back to school to become a chiropractor. And so, yes, over the past 33 years, I've been uh, taking a, a mind-body uh, approach um, with my patients and certainly with a focus on, on stress and helping with stress management. There's been a lot of talk with, um, especially with the global pandemic about uh, people's mental health, but I really wish they would call it body mind health <laughs> because the mind and body are totally interconnected. Um, that's, right. many, many, that's been known for years right. and there's been many years of, uh, of research supporting that. I was saying that we, as a society, we have this tendency to go extreme, either this way or that way, before we were just focusing on body and forgetting about mind. And we are focusing on mind, forgetting about body, but they are interconnected. Like I said, like, you know, mind is the software that runs this, the hardware. You can't just take care of only hardware or only software. You have to take care of both. Absolutely. So can you share and, and a story, people... your life story or somebody else's story? Yeah. Back in 2001, that was probably the worst year of my life. <laughs> uh, it started off on uh, New Year's Day when my mom passed away suddenly uh, from a heart attack. Um, she had had uh, rheumatic fever twice when she was young, and that was just um, after World War II, so she didn't have access to antibiotics. So she had had a heart condition um, throughout her life. And, uh, and anyway, so yeah, she ended up passing away very suddenly. I was also at around the same time diagnosed uh, with a condition that I was going to need some uh, day surgery for. Um, my 
11 and a half year relationship with my long-term boyfriend ended. <laughs> um, I was new, relatively new into my chiropractic practice. So I was still building that. I had, I think like $75,000 of student loan debt <laughs> and business debt. Uh, when our relationship ended, I was trying to find a place to live, but Calgary at that time was really, uh, was really booming. So there was only a 1% vacancy rate. And uh, on top of all of that, when I went to the hospital to have the day surgery, uh, they almost killed me with um, an over giving me too much anesthetic. I actually quit breathing and uh, and but they never told me about it. I discovered after the fact when I woke up and my throat was sore and I had a cut on my lip and I actually I had to ask questions as to about what happened. So needless to say, and, and all of this happened over a period of just a few months. So needless to say, I experienced a very, very high level of stress <laughs> during that time. But it's often interesting that when we go through these times of intense stress and crisis, that that's when other tools um, come to us. And so I was using um, some uh, meditation tools and some uh, energy medicine tools that I already knew um, how to do. Uh, and I belong to a, a healing uh, team uh, through my faith community. And so they were very supportive as well. Um, uh, but then I also at that time uh, learned a, an energy medicine technique that uh, tied in a lot with belief systems and helping to clear out emotional um, issues and, and uh, you know, built from there. So it was a, a huge transition for me. And then I guess it would be about four or five years ago that uh, I came across uh, emotional freedom techniques. And that's had another huge impact in my life uh, in dealing not only when, when you know, major life stressors has, has come along. Uh, my, my dad passed away after being ill with Parkinson's disease for many years um, and just dealing with that grief and trauma and, you know, still running my practice and still, you know, try, at that time I was just launching my, my online business. Um, so there's, you know, lots of uh, life stressors, let alone just the busyness of day-to-day -day life. And so all the tools that I teach, the meditations that I teach, um, emotional freedom techniques, there or it's also known as tapping, all of the techniques that I teach people, whether it be working with my clients um, uh, or online students, uh, or even with some of my patients, I use myself <laughs> um, because I know that they work and so I never teach anything that um, that I haven't done personally or that I don't feel uh, personally has enhanced uh, my life so when I look back at things that I've navigated through and I mean certainly other people have gone through way worse things than I have but when I look at the things that I've navigated through the tools that I, I have have been just instrumental in helping me navigate through that successfully in terms of being able to be healthy and to be able to you know keep it together <laughs> it seems like you know you're ta you're talking my story <laughs> <laughs> yeah I was kind of in that stressful phase new business big debt you know really really busy taking care of the kid and taking care of self and everything and then boom i was in the car accident and broke my right hand and i had to also apply all the tools that i was teaching other people and and more and so as i learned and i as i was getting out of that phase when i started being able to write because my i had broken my right hand so it was really hard for me to write I really develop this appreciation of being able to write and so then I started writing and I had this mission of bringing the tools that helped me from inside the office to outside the office. So people like me don't have to suffer and they can get better faster. So uh, wonderful. So how is the life different since you have been applying these tools in your life? Oh, my gosh. It's just better in so many ways because I know that when a challenge comes up, up, whether it be a situational stress challenge, like, you know, the loss of a loved one or, you know, someone uh, getting ill, um, or whether it just be the day-to-day -day stress or whether it be, um, you know, limiting beliefs that are maybe holding me back from taking my business to the next level. I know that I've got tools that will help me navigate through that. And that's very empowering. And it's not that, you know, I mean, I'm sure you know this as well. Like we, it's not like we have it all figured out. <laughs> it's not like I have it all figured out. Um, but just knowing that I've got tools mm -hmm. that I can go to uh, to help me work through things more quickly. Um, and so, you know, oftentimes when we're stressed about things, we can kind of be our own worst enemies in a way, and, and we get a lot of mileage out of it. <laughs> and so by having tools in place and by having daily self-care practice, uh, having a daily self-care practice in place, um, that means that you can move through things much more quickly. It doesn't mean that there aren't going to be challenges. It doesn't mean that, you know, you're not going to get stressed out. You know, I can get stressed out as much as anybody, um, but it, it means that you can move through it much more quickly and much more effectively um, so that you can do the things that you love to do and then so you can live out you know your life purpose in terms of helping and serving others 
That's wonderful. Yeah. I would love to learn some of the tools that help you that we can teach the audience in this uh, short period of time. Are there some fast tools that you can teach us? Absolutely. I'm all about making things simple and actionable. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, they won't get done. So I, I like to take people through kind of a three step um, process. So step number one that I like to teach, you know, my patients or my coaching clients is to have some simple go to tools prepared and in place so that when you are hitting that overwhelm, you know, whether it be building up during the day, um, or whether you get some unexpected bad news, you've got something that you can go to right away, you're not having to think through, oh, gee, should I do a guided meditation? Where's that book that I was reading last week? Um, what's that podcast that you know, when you when you're in stress mode, you're in survival mode, you're not in intellectual mode. And so tying in with the, the mind body connection, when, when you're stressed out, some of your community may not realize that um, you can lose up to 70% blood flow to your prefrontal cortex. Well, your prefrontal cortex is where you do your creativity, your decision making, <laughs> you know, um, incorporating like learning new information and incorporating it. Well, when you're in fight or flight mode, when you're in stress mode, yeah, you're not in intellectual mode. And so I usually encourage people um, to have a couple of go to tools that they can have, you know, just written maybe as a note in their phone or written on a piece of paper in their wallet so that when they do get overwhelmed or you know you get some unexpected bad news the only thing you have to think of is just going to get that information you don't have to think about even what that information is it's right there so I have a huge fan of meditation and there's a lot of people don't realize that there are so many different types of meditation usually a, a key resistance to meditation is that it's just like oh I can't concentrate or I can't clear my mind and and it's just like don't worry about that I've got some really simple meditations for you <laughs> So one meditation that I like to teach people that's really simple but powerful is just a breathing meditation where you literally just stop and take 10 deep breaths in and out. And you just need to make sure that the amount of air that you're breathing in equals the amount of air that you're breathing out. And so even just doing that for 10 repetitions, it'll take you less than a minute to do, that sends a calming signal to your nervous system. It helps to calm the amygdala, which is you've got an amygdala in each hemisphere. It helps to send a calming signal to start taking you out of fight or flight mode and towards um, rest and digest mode or, or more of a relaxation mode. Um, I, I always joke with people saying, you know, you're going to be breathing anyway, so you may as well use it to your full advantage. <laughs> Another uh, breathing meditation. So how was the difference between just breathing and this? What is the difference between this, you know, you're breathing automatically anyways, and when you are doing this intentional deep breathing, what is the difference? Um, you exactly, it's intentional. And so usually when you're stressed, you end up doing more upper chest or shallow breathing. Whereas if you're doing these nice deep breaths in and out, that's the difference, um, a key difference. And that's what will send a calming signal to your nervous system. You can also easily combine um, a mantra with the breathing. And so one that I like to teach people is this that you just say in your mind as you inhale, I breathe in relaxation. And then as you exhale, you say to yourself, I breathe out tension. And so you would just repeat that I breathe in relaxation, I breathe out tension. And you could do that 10 times. You could certainly do it for longer than that. Not, but 10 times is something that's very easy to do and you can do that in the mo in the moment very easily i love these meditations because you can literally do them anytime anywhere I mean what i've seen is that if you do uh, more than 10 at a time a brain cannot handle too much of anything so too much of oxygen is also not good you know if you, if you're doing really deep breathing if you do like consequently a lot of them then you may start feeling dizzy so you know, eight to 10 is a good amount and then you need to give yourself a break. Yeah, and that's also why you need to be mindful of the amount of air that you breathe in is the amount of air that you breathe out so that there's a balance there so that you won't um, get lightheaded. But yeah, 10 is, is very nice. I, I love these, um, these two meditations and another meditation that's nice to do is actually a walking meditation. And you can just uh, do a walking gratitude meditation actually where you're just saying thank you, thank you, thank you with each step and you can do that in your home, you can do that, you know, for a walk around the block, just needing to be mindful of your environment, obviously. But uh, yeah, these are, are very simple tools to use. And, and if you look at how when when most people are stressed out, the stress is building, 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 building throughout the day. So at the end of the day, most people have like really high stress levels. But if you're going to have any chance of getting a good night's sleep, <laughs> you know, within a, you know, within a couple of hours, you've got to somehow get your stress level from way up here to down here. 
So what I encourage people to do is just once an hour, do a breathing meditation. So as the stress builds up, then you can bring it down. And so then you're more modulating the stress throughout the day. So at the end of the day, your stress levels are going to be lower than they would normally be. And then it's going to be that much easier to do, you know, some more relaxing in the evening. So uh, those are two things that I really like. Go ahead. What is it? <laughs> um, so emotional freedom techniques um, is a, it's considered an energy psychology technique. The energy part comes because you, it involves tapping over a specific set of acupressure points uh, on the head and on the face and upper body. And as you're tapping, Tapping on these acupressure points, you're verbally stating what's bothering you. And there's been, um, it's been around for a long time. It actually started off, Dr. Roger Callahan was a psychologist who developed a technique called thought field therapy. And one of his students, he developed it in the, in the 80s. And then in the early 90s, one of his students, Gary Craig, simplified it so that it would be more accessible to people to use as a self-care tool as well. And so that's, uh, and he called it emotional freedom techniques. And so to date, there's been over, I think at least 115 um, studies that have been published in peer-reviewed journals showing the effectiveness in EFT helping to um, deal with anxiety, with depression, with uh, eating disorders, mm -hmm. uh, food addiction, mm -hmm. um, even PTSD actually, uh, huge significant um, changes. There was one study that was done um, over a six week period and uh, at the end of it um, combined 86% of the, of the um, uh, people participating in the study no longer met the PTSD criteria. So it's being used by some psychologists and psychiatrists and some VA hospitals uh, in the United wow. States. So it has a really wide application. And there's also been some really interesting studies showing how even after one session of EFT, like a one one, one hour session, uh, that people's cortisol levels, of course, cortisol is a well-known stress hormone, that their cortisol levels decreased by 24% wow. after just a one hour tapping session with an EFT practitioner. So, um, and there's been other very interesting studies actually sh um, showing how it can boost immunoglobulin, uh, immunoglobulin A, which is uh, one of the ones that's found in the saliva, uh, and that it can be uh, increased uh, significantly as well. So it also helps to boost your immune system. So again, it just ties in with the whole body-mind connection that you can't um, be having mental emotional stress without that affecting your body and you know and vice versa and so what I love about EFT is that um, you can there's one um, t um, technique called the basic recipe that anybody can learn I have a, a tutorial on my web um, you can use a care tool to deal with just like the, the day-to-day stressors um, that you might uh, have or to help you know help you navigate through a, a stressful time um, but then you can also work with a practitioner whether it be you know a success mindset coach whether it be a psychologist psychiatrist or psychologist who's trained in the technique to work through uh, deeper issues. So the work that I do, although I'm trained to help people um, deal with, with trauma, with emotional trauma, um, I'm choosing with my success mindset coaching to work more with limiting beliefs um, that can be contributing to people's um, stress levels as well as, you know, mental blocks that are preventing people from uh, you know, living the life that they want or creating the business that they want. Uh, you know, if you trauma, um, like maybe emotional abuse or, you know, an adverse child childhood um, experience that you had, um, then, you know, I encourage people to work um, with a mental health care professional who may be trained in EFT. There's other, of course, mind-body um, techniques that are very effective for dealing with, with significant uh, trauma. Day stuff or for the limiting beliefs, um, I find key to be very, very effective as a self-care tool. But then, as I said, I also um, help my clients work through that, you know, navigate through limiting beliefs as well that may be holding them back. You do the practice yourself. You know, is there a, uh, is there a tip you can give to an audience that they can do it themselves? Like what you were saying, the, the basic technique. Can you teach us? Yeah, it would probably take too long uh, to teach uh, people how to do this within the confines of the podcast. Um, but I would encourage people, as I said, I do have a tutorial uh, on my website that takes people through um, how to do the technique and how they can use it as a as a self care tool. And it's I with the between meditation and um, you know different types of meditation, you can do you know gratitude journaling as uh, another one that's lovely. Um, EFT is very powerful. The key is to be having it as a daily self care practice. 
And so it's through repetition and through doing things consistently that you can help to keep your stress levels lower than what they would be if you weren't using any of these tools. So, um, you know, having a daily self-care practice or creating them as a ritual um, is really, really uh, important because you can't be a human being on planet Earth and, and experience stress <laughs> and not experience stress, I should say. That's just part of being a human being on planet Earth. But burnout is totally optional. So, no, nicely said, nicely said. I also recommend people, all my patients, I recommend them to make, uh, you know, their gratitude journal. And I have practiced my gratitude journal since my accident now 16 years back. Yeah, my day doesn't start without uh, without the morning ritual. So how do you see the relationship of these daily practices with success mindset? So what is the relationship? Why do you call it success mindset? Yeah, so with the success mindset, um, the word success is kind of a, um, a loaded word because the, the the term means different things to different people. Um, some people hear success and they think, oh, that just means that you're greedy and you want to make a lot of money. Um, other people will see success as, oh, they actually live through cancer, <laughs> you know. So there's, you know, different extremes. Years ago, I came across a quote by Robert Louis Stevenson that I feel defines success. And the quote is, um, to be who we are and to become who we are capable of becoming is the only end in life. And I love this quote because to be who we are, oftentimes we spend a lot of time not being happy with who we are or where we are right now. Like maybe we're not at the weight that we're at, or maybe we don't you know, have as much you know, money saved as we w thought we would have at this point in our lives. Or maybe our, you know, our practice isn't built up the way that we would like it or our you know, online business you know, isn't going the direction that we thought, or, you know, th there's a lot of unhappiness that we can generate <laughs> by being unhappy where we are now, but by generating and like, yeah. just gratitude, it's very powerful to just appreciate like where you are in this moment, what you've, you know, experienced and what you've come through, what you've survived uh, at this point in your life, just appreciate who and what and where you are at this point in life is, is really important. To me, that's a key part of success. Um, and then the other part is then just recognizing our potential Right, and, right. and do the best that we can to, to live up through that. So with a success mindset, part of, of appreciating who you are and where you are at this point in time is honoring yourself. And a way of honoring yourself is taking really good care of yourself through these daily self-care uh, practices. Mm -hmm. And another uh, key aspect too that I, I call I call Wonderful. the basics um, that often go out the window when we get stressed out is, is um, you know, like we stop drinking enough water um, or we're not eating healthily or we stop exercising or we're not exercising um, or we're not getting enough sleep. And so even just paying some attention and, and just taking really simple steps um, to take care of the basics because that's where you build your resilience. Um, and that's kind of like fuel in the tank so that when, you know, unexpected things happen right. or, you know, when you're, um, you, it could even be positive stress too. You know, it could be exciting to be starting a new business or taking your business in a new direction or, um, you know, right. maybe you've got a, any stress, yeah, 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 any, whether it's positive stress or negative stress, um, you know, you need to have resilience. And so all of those things are part of a success mindset because wonderful, if you're giving wonderful. yourself credit. So I, I, you know, when you're having fun, time flies. Yes. Yeah, so time yeah. is so, flying and we really need to wrap up here. Um, so, uh, oh, okay. <laughs> Let me share with the audience. They can reach you and read more about you and more about your programs at uh, drjenniferharrison.com. One word, right. drjenniferharrison.com. Do you have any take home message for our audience? Uh, yes, I do. Um, one is just keep it simple. <laughs> if you're gonna be making changes in your life, just make them simple, doable changes. The other piece uh, that I would like to share, and I, I share this um, in my uh, weekly newsletter at the end, um, is that for to remember that only you have the power to choose to go from your stress self to your best self. And so we all have more more power uh, to choose and, and make uh, healthy choices than we think that we might have. Well, wonderful. I'm so excited that you're sharing your gift of what is called three ways to break through burnout and boost your brain. Three minutes at a time. Title, title seems very interesting. What would people get if they get this gift? Yeah, so they can they could just uh, go to my website, drjenniferharrison.com. So drjenniferharrison.com. And it's on the homepage. And it's a PDF that they can download. Um, so I do go through 
um, some meditation, some EFT, and some other strategies that can all easily be done in uh, three minutes or less. <laughs> so they're very actionable, they're very doable, and they can make a significant difference uh, in relieving stress and boosting your brain power. Wonderful, wonderful. And as always, you can sign up for all the gifts at happyandhealthymind.com. And that would also give you the access to her gift. And if you want reminders and links for all the resources that we share in these programs, you can text word joyful to the number 38470. This only works in US, I found out. So if you're in US and you want all the links, you can do that. Otherwise, you need to visit the website and download from there. All right. So it's time for our special Why Affirmations Fail. So many people, they try to practice affirmations and then sometimes it doesn't work out. So they say, oh, it doesn't work. So the people who practice affirmation, um, they see it that it works and it brings joy in their life. Uh, on the other hand, other people don't. So what are the reasons why it works for some people and why it doesn't work for some people? Before I go into the reasons why it doesn't work, uh, let me ask, what do you think is the affirmation? Dr. Harrison, in your mind, what is an affirmation? Uh, so an affirmation is a positive statement uh, about something that you want to create in your life. And uh, I'm excited to hear uh, why they don't work because I, I know that they don't work sometimes <laughs> and that can cause a lot of stress too. <laughs> right, right. And so one of my affirmation is that I want to be uh, 115 pounds. <laughs> <All right>. so, <laughs> so, so my affirmation is um, I am 115 pounds. And so my mind says, you liar. <laughs> because my machine says something different and so a lot of times uh, the affirmations <laughs> don't work for logical people who who just cannot say something that is not true like you know they have the evidence to the contrary so they don't believe it and if they don't believe it then it won't work or they give up uh, easily uh, because they've tried it a few times and it doesn't work or it doesn't come true so then they give up or they forget to practice on, uh, on a daily basis so then it doesn't have the power so what can you do how can you make these uh, affirmations come true so i truly believe in the power of affirmation and visualization when the documentary the secret came out it became a big you know sensation everywhere in terms of law of attraction if you want something you ask and you believe and you receive and it was kind of really simplified and some of the things i agreed and some of the things i don't didn't agree so i had to come up with my own version of law of attraction what i think is the reason people people think that okay you have to blindly believe and I'm a logical person, so I cannot just blindly believe something is not there. I, and this actually happened. I was giving a web semin seminar and, and a, to a group of people, and I was talking about the power of affirmation and visualization. This woman said, like, you know, how can I visualize that I have a million dollar when I'm getting collection calls? And so <laughs> I was like, okay, well... Uh, that kind of got me to thinking it's like okay and then in my life also when i i would practice some of the affirmation and it would it would not come it's like no it just my mind is fighting and if my mind is fighting it would not come true so i needed to come up with a solution so i um, i have shared this with, in other programs that i came up with the solution that i write i'm grateful in advance that i am 115 pounds so now my mind doesn't fight because yeah i can you know say thank you in advance uh, for something that i know that it could it would happen so one of the things was that i was able to overcome that mind fighting so once you make it believable that it is possible then it could have a better uh, result and then you have to practice it regularly and you if you forget about it and you don't practice it then you would not do things that would bring you closer to what you want to do so i have come up with the different steps so instead of uh, law of attraction ask believe and achieve i say clarify repeat and act okay so uh, asking also means clarifying in your head what you actually want and be more specific and and clear exactly what you want that gives the blueprint to your brain where you want to go 
the second is repeat so you regularly repeat that that is what you want that is what your intention is so the more you repeat the more your brain would remember that that is what you want to achieve and then act you know i for the longest time i was writing i am 115 pounds but if i'm not changing my diet and if i'm not doing exercises and you know, all my actions is going against what i want i'm not going to achieve it so i need so i started writing in front of my affirmation the first smallest step that i can do to get towards my goal so three steps when you want something clarify in your head what exactly do you want okay do you want to be um, a famous person do you want to be a business person you want to be on radio show you want to be a doctor you want to be you know uh, whatever you want to be clarify what exactly you want and it could be smaller things like that like you know step by step in between two um i want to be able to wake up every day at five o'clock whatever so clarify what you want step one repeat so every day so i have my journaling practice where i write every day so it repeats and it reminds me that that is what my goal is and then act one small action towards your goal every time you um you review it you say okay what well, this is the next step that i i need to do to be able to achieve my goal and that would make these affirmations come true for you visualization is when you see it clearly in your mind so when you clarify you see this is what i want sometimes i draw a diagram in my journal that that is what i want and then you start taking steps patiently repeatedly when you practice when you discipline when you develop this success mindset you can achieve that success what do you think about that i think that's wonderful dr rosina and it ties in so beautifully with what we were talking about cuz when you feel that resistance all the things that you said are super powerful especially being consistent with the journaling but i would also invite um people to try eft to to help overcome some of that resistance and limiting belief systems too yeah so like you know the, all these tools combined together we wanted to kind of bring one tool each time that i i bring and then let me you know right now olympics are going and so you see these olympic uh, champions it doesn't happen overnight they they dream about it what they wanted they clarified exactly what they wanted they repeated uh, repeated reminded themselves what they really wanted and they repeatedly act on it one step at a time practice every day practice 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 and that's what make an olympic champion on that note i want to leave you with a question what are you going to do what do you choose are you going to just say hey it doesn't happen or are you going to take that step one step every day every day becoming 1% better 1% closer to your goal on that note stay safe happy and healthy till next time dr rosie